the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's going to be a beautiful day that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello. You through? There we go. Howdy. Okay. Let me just power pole down and tell y'all something. You know, fooling fish is an art in itself, but tricking them into hitting something that's artificial, an imposter, is really kind of special. This alone is a major part of what we call fishing. You know, to be successful at this sport involves the process of elimination. Now this requires a systematic approach based on trial and error until you uncover what will produce at the moment. Now let me tell you, if a bait is worth tying on, well, it should be given a fair chance to produce. Having doubt as you pull the knot tight or even thinking of another lure you should be using before the one you just tied on gets wet or changing the lure after a cast or two is a sign of desperation and a lack of confidence, not only in the lure, but in your approach as well. Before you switch, give it a fair shot. Tell you what you need to do. Try everything you can think to do with the first lure. Think about the lure. Think about how it works, your presentation, and where you're fishing it. Use it until you're really convinced it's not going to produce right now. Tell you something else. Think about this. Live forage doesn't fight its way through the water. Instead, it swims and moves smoothly and easily as it cruises along. Sure, it may vary its speed somewhat, moving faster or slower or even stopping. But if danger threatens, it's sure going to do something different. Speed up, retreat, go crazy, play possum, or try to hide. But most times, move out like a late freight. Fishing lures come in all shapes and sizes, and using them involves countless variables. Experience is a tremendous teacher, only if you mentally record your wins and defeats. In the meantime, there are seven key essentials that every angler should commit to memory. They are approach, depth, presentation, experimentation, concentration, learning, and confidence. Now we'll be discussing each of these as we fish along today. If you practice them every time you're on the water and practice them with a lot of motivation and desire, I'll guarantee you, you'll master the artificial lure game. Bill Dance Outdoors. 
sponsored by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is sponsored by Outdoor Water Solutions, offering pond and lake aeration systems with energy-saving solutions, including solar and wind, customized to fit your need. Visit OutdoorWaterSolutions.com for quality aeration products. Come here. That's a nice one. Okay. It's a known fact that some lures seem to work better than others and will catch more fish at times. And it's not uncommon to find one angler who swears by one certain bait and another avid angler who complains that he can't catch a cold using it. Regardless of what lure you're fishing with, it's very important to put some thought behind your cast. If the spot looks good, don't make a cast and leave. Make several, maybe as many as three or four. What you want to do is psych yourself to believe a fish is there. Now by doing this, you'll accomplish two important things. One, you'll be fishing the spot more carefully, and secondly, much more thoroughly. Another key component I've learned about artificial plugs is that when a bass, especially a large bass, is attracted to most lures, many times it'll swim up to the bait, maybe look at it if it's stationary, or follow it a short distance if it's moving, deciding whether or not to bust it. If the lure doesn't suddenly change speed, action, or direction, as would living prey, there's a good chance the fish will reject it. This is why on the retrieve, you should be very aware of your presentation, changing the movement every few feet or so as you work it along. Now, it's very important you do this with any lure you fish, creating a natural erratic look, and that's one thing that will entice a strike. Remember, you're fishing an imposter. It's made of foreign matter, so you must do all in your power to make it look like the real thing. Before you switch, give it a fair shot Tell you what you need to do. Try everything you can think to do with the first lure. Think about the lure. Think about how it works, your presentation, and where you're fishing it. Use it until you're really convinced it's not gonna produce right now. Tell you something else. Think about this. Live forage doesn't fight its way through the water. Instead, it swims and moves smoothly and easily as it cruises along. Sure, it may vary its speed somewhat, moving faster or slower, or even stopping. But if danger threatens, it's sure going to do something different. Speed up, retreat, go crazy, play possum, or try to hide. But most times, move out like a late freight. Come and get out in the pad. There you come. Oh, buddy. Look them. All right, Buster. Coming back to get you. We'll get my little bogus on you. That's a pretty one. Ouch, your teeth are sharp. 
a nice one. Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Boom. Boom. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reels, Quantum Performance Tuned, Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's Equipment Log is brought to you by Ego Fishing and their all-new S2 Slider Landing Nets with the most advanced handle extension technology. Take the battle to the water with Ego. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Build Ants exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, bite your fish, not your fish finder. You know, when I think back over the years of the really big bass that I've been blessed to catch, one thing for sure comes to mind, and that would be lure presentation. Without question, a slow, erratic retrieve has produced my biggest catches. Bass, as a general rule, are not tailored to long pursuit. They're not gonna chase and eat something that doesn't act halfway natural. That's about a three pound fish, three and a half. Oh, buddy. That's a nice one. Come here, come here, and turn around. Now say off on me. Don't you dare jump. Oh, that's a pretty fish. Whew. Get my pliers. I'm gonna stick in this doggone hooks. Look at that. Look how fat that baby is. You little fat thing, you. You pretty. Yes, you are. All right, we're going back. Remember those seven key essentials we talked about? Let's discuss each one of them, okay? The first one is approach. The shallower the fish, the more critical your approach should be. A fish that's become aware or alarmed of your presence can be very difficult to catch, especially with artificial baits. To catch a bass, you must first get within casting range, then offer him something he'll bite. Depth, establishing a depth pattern is a real key to fish catching success. Your offering must be fished at his depth level or close to it in order for the fish to find and get it. The more inactive the bass, the more critical this can be. Presentation, establishing a rhythm with your retrieve is critical because it's the rhythm in the lure that attracts bass. How you retrieve the bait determines the rhythm. Once you find the best presentation, stay with it until you feel it won't produce any longer. Then experiment with different retrieves until you establish a new one or have to change baits. Experiment. If one doesn't add this word to his fishing vocabulary and learn to practice it, he's gonna find himself having lots of fishless days. When all else fails, it's the smart angler who experiments until he finds the right combination that works at that particular time. Concentration. Fishermen who score fairly consistently depend heavily on this word. Total concentration is a major part of every move a good angler makes. He has a mental picture of the underwater terrain he's fishing and every movement of his lure and monitors each variation Successful fishermen are always thinking and can duplicate any lure action that brings a strike. Learning. This too is a key word. Always make it a practice to try and learn something new on every outing. You'll learn a lot by observing 
and asking lots of questions. Remember the phrase, to learn to fish, you must fish to learn. Confidence. This word called confidence is without a doubt the greatest single lure in your tackle box. The biggest factor in artificial lure fishing remains confidence in the bait you're fishing. Confidence can't be bought in a sporting goods store or acquired from a successful or experienced angler. It's primarily earned through experience. You'll never learn everything there is to know about lure fishing. You acquire confidence through learning, experimenting, and by developing an understanding of the habits and the habitat of your quarry, and by mastering all the little details of your tackle, and finally, by slowly putting together the pieces of the fishing jigsaw puzzle. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Have you got a great lake or pond you enjoy? I'm sure you do. And if you want to take care of it, here's what I suggest. Outdoor Water Solutions is my go-to company for all my pond products. If you're looking for aeration, fountains, docks, and a ton of other stuff, you can find them online at OutdoorWaterSolutions.com. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And by Garmin Force Trolling Motors, fish with force. Closed caption provided by PowerPole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos with their advanced sonar technology like Panoptic's Live Scope All Seeing Sonar. You'll spend less time finding your fish. The Ego Tactical Dry Gear Bag will protect your gear from whatever Mother Nature may throw your way. This bag is constructed using high performance waterproof TPU fabric that is stronger, lighter, more flexible, and abrasion resistant than PVC fabric. It features a roll top with zipper closure, welded seams, Cryptek camo technology, molly loops for external tool management, and a contoured shoulder strap. Mother Nature, bring it on. Come be part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Good. I'm gonna come back here and get you. Ate the whole thing, didn't you? A stump, log, rock better get out of the way when this one comes to hunting. It's Booyah's XCS 100. Their new square bill crankbait that really gets the job done. Let me tell you, it's a type of lure that you just know it's gonna catch bass when you tie it on. This little bass catcher casts like a bullet. It's two inches long and weighs three eighths of an ounce, and it's available in several top bass catching colors. It's a silent crankbait that runs to depths of four to six feet. It's got an erratic hunting action with a square bill that deflects off cover. It's available in a 100 and a 200 size. Today, we're using the 100 size. Okay, tell you what, let's talk about the equipment we're using in today's show. It's one of my favorite rods, length, and action in a bait casting rod, which I designed for Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. It's not one I'm endorsing for them, it's one I designed for them. It's what I call one of my go-to actions. This six foot 10 medium action rod 
has an IM6 graphite blank. It's constructed for sensitivity, balance, with incredible strength that gives you the best on the water performance and the market has no other rod of comparable cost and quality. In all honesty, it's the sweetest action rod I've ever fished with for quarter to five eighths ounce lures. I can promise you that. And tell you what, and we've got her dressed out with a Quantum 100 series smoke reel spooled with 14 pound test Trilene XL line. Another good one. Get out from under the boat. They all want to run under the boat. Yep, that's a good one. Let me come back here. It's hard to get in this hole. Oh, you big old fish. Get out of that motor. Got him. You know, something we haven't discussed today in fishing lures is size, weight, and color. Now, these also can make a tremendous difference, but that's a subject we're gonna to have to discuss at a later date. In closing, let me say that regardless of what artificial bait you select to use, take the time to learn to work it as well as you possibly can. You'll discover in time that you'll catch more bass on a lure that you know how to work and one that you have confidence in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. No, I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today.